Hello everyone and welcome to our European Ringing Cedars community call today. It's wonderful that you join us, that you spend the next hour and a half with us in our community here. We're going to speak about interesting topic related to Ringing Cedars books to Anastasia and of course we uh, want to have a beautiful interactive session. As you know, this session will be recorded and later um, posted on YouTube as an audio um, file, audio event. So for those who are not able to watch it now, to be now live with us, that they get the chance, the possibility to watch it later, the recording. Okay, wonderful. So let's start. So yeah, how are you doing guys? Where are you from? Maybe you write a little bit in the chat where you are from. So we see I'm here in Germany, but probably most of you know. <laughs> Maybe you want to say something or write down in the chat where you are from. So we know where we are located. Okay, Moritz is from Germany as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh yeah. Uh, okay. Hello. Did you do you want to say something? <laughs> you're unmuted then uh, I think yeah. And Dennis, you're unmuted. Uh, okay. So would you like to introduce yourself? Would you like to say something? Because I see now you're unmuted. If so, then just Feel free. Okay, you're from the USA. Wow, this is awesome. Yeah, we have actually every time in our course we have someone from the USA, which is awesome. What time is it there where you are? Probably morning, isn't it? Hi. Well, it's it's eight o'clock. Around eight o'clock. Okay, so you just had your breakfast or not yet? Yeah, I'm an early morning person, so this is a good time. <laughs> so yeah. This is a good time. Yeah. yeah I spent most of my time. Sorry. I spent most of my time living in the national forest and. Um, Beautiful. And yeah, I've been wanting to live in harmony with the natural world. It's, but it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> and I read um, Tom Brown's books thirty years ago on Native American spirituality and living in harmony with the earth so happy really happening now <laughs> i've been waiting a long time you know i didn't think i would see it you know in my lifetime so anyway so you have money <laughs> happy to your see dream. all this happening okay <laughs> this, this is oh, it's, it's, i i hope so i it's been decades i've been waiting <laughs> you know so but yeah sometimes it takes time sometimes it takes longer you know it's there are some sometimes i have a feeling that you know when we want something uh, from our heart then the universe delivers yeah when we really have the desire and we want to have something sometimes it takes longer because maybe there are other experiences that we have to um, have first and we have to learn something and then when the right time comes then it comes and you see you are the best example for that so yeah and now how how long have you been living on your in your paradise um i've been i've been you know living in the back country for about um 20 years but really full time since 2008 mm -hmm. and you know I don't have any land I just camp so with my dog and mm -hmm. it's been kind of hard because I just haven't found anybody that wanted to share my reality you know so yes yes um, when we get a lot of snow here <laughs> it's hard okay so I'm just starting here to maybe start trying to plant some plants because mm -hmm. of Anastasia's books and everything so when did you read the Anastasia books uh last I, st I I found them last summer 
Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy that they're so similar to Native American spirituality. I just, I was so, it's just, it's, I just, it gave me new hope. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm like, oh, this is, it's really happening and I'm going to see it. <laughs> yeah, sure. So you see the power of your thoughts uh, show you that you can do anything, you can create whatever you want. And yeah, this is wonderful. Uh, um, I've been doing really, really a lot of spiritual things in my whole life. I have been on my spiritual journey. Maybe in the beginning when I was a child, it was not that conscious or, or even maybe more conscious than Then later when I was uh, like a teenager and later in my 20s, um, then I really began to to dive deeper in my spiritual life. And of course, we all have our journey and it's always not always easy and it's not always that you want something and you get it immediately. This just this is just a journey and that's how I see it, how I learned to to see it that it's not about that we have to get everything immediately because it's not how life is. And this we are learning, we are experiencing things and then when we stay persistent and believe in ourselves and have our yeah let's say desire and when we have our vision then it manifests this this is what probably all people say who really achieved something in their life who um, had their dreams but do you think well i would like to ask you something because it just comes into my mind now that everyone of us probably had in his life or her life a great desire which manifested And then it was such a great joy and 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 gratitude and just happiness, pure joy, deep pure joy from the deep of our heart. This is how I experience it. And yeah, maybe in the beginning we don't realize um, how does it work, but later when we start to contemplate it and learn maybe more, then we realize that we do it consciously. So this is what I have learned. And today I am not that. Uh, impatient that I want to have everything now because it's take time and I allow everything to to take its time which is needed and I learned it mostly from Anastasia when I read the books and it's brought me so much closer to nature and I learned that it takes time you cannot just you know pull on the on the grass that it grows faster it takes time and we have to learn to be in harmony with it and this is why everything we live in this dimension which is really slowly this is the slowest dimension there is and it takes time our thoughts don't manifest as quickly as we would do it maybe in other dimension but it's not a reason to I don't know, to get unsatisfied or depressed or frustrated. And we all know it, but these books teach us that, uh, yeah, we can, with the power of our thoughts, we can create beautiful things. And, yeah, I'm learning it. I'm, um, you know, it was in the beginning, I read all those books like novels. So really, I read them from part one to part ten. But now I see them different. Now I take one book and I read a couple of pages and I manifest, I, I contemplate it and it's so wonderful. This gives me so much um, wisdom and knowledge and it's, it's like, yeah, it's this energy which is in, in these books is so wonderful. And now I am in the book six. I show you the German version for those of you who don't know it. It's really beautiful. I love this book. It's hardcover. It's wonderful. And yeah, so I read a couple of pages and I contemplate on them and I get so much knowledge and inspiration. And this is how I see them. I don't know how you read the books. How how do you feel about those books when you read them? Maybe some of you want to share. How do you read them? Do you read them, uh, for example, the whole book at once or you read Uh, different pages how do you do it do you want to share some experience maybe we 
and uh, talk a little bit about it because those books are so deep and so multi-level <laughs> that it's so much more than just um, yeah than just learning how to grow plants yeah <laughs> many people they think in the beginning that it's about yeah how to live close to nature and how to be um, how to grow your own food and to be self-sufficient and such there are thousands thousands of books about these topics out out there but i think this these are really really different at least for me so maybe you want to share how you feel uh, when you read these books and how you read them want to say something <laughs> shouldn't be just my show yeah I, yeah I, I just think um yeah i just you know i have to process a lot of her words and some of it's like wow i knew it i knew it was like that you know and she just confirms what i've what I felt a long time, you know, and I read the first book and, you know, I've read all the books now and I, I just, I like to read them over because every time I read her words, sometimes I get more meaning out of them, you know. Yes, yes, exactly. It's for me, it's the living word. It's not just a book. I say it uh, over and over again, but this is exactly how I feel. These books, the, the words, Anastasia's words, they are not just storytelling yeah that's that's so much deeper and yeah and we see it when you sell books i don't know so many times and they are translated in so many languages then yeah it's it says something about them yeah awesome anybody else would like to say something about yourself uh, or about the books how you how you read them how do they impact your life what do you feel or, or is there any other topic that you would like to speak about today? I'm really open for anything. Uh, what is on your mind maybe at the moment? Is there any special topic that you would like to share or express yourself? Then just please feel free and unmute yourself and we will continue because I, I want everyone to be to feel free and to say what's, whatever is on, on your mind and in your heart that you would like to share. You're shy today. <laughs> okay. I see that everybody is quiet, so you prefer to sit back and listen. That's fine too. So yeah, maybe we will we'll continue. And then uh, when there is an impulse you want to just jump in, then feel free. And uh, until then, I will tell you maybe a little bit about myself, what I've been doing, but as I said before, we, sh we all should have a chance to participate and to say something. So, yeah. Feel you free. can hear me? Yes, yes, Moritz, I can hear you. Oh, I'm nice. <laughs> um, but I can I... see you. <laughs> but it's okay if you prefer yes. to stay in the front. <laughs> feel free. Uh, when I'm reading the books, uh, I feel like uh, uh, I have to read them so many times more to really understand it's mm. it's so deep uh yes i can't understand it by reading it once or something like this there's so much deep knowledge and wow yes <laughs> so you feel similar like me would you like to say how how your spiritual journey begin and how did you find the books and so on would you like to share something um yes uh, i think i found the books two years ago or three years ago and yeah um, and I really really like them have you read all of them already um, no I'm um, by book five at the moment mm -hmm. but uh, I listened to the audiobooks uh, from mm -hmm. one to ten Okay, so yes. you know the, all the knowledge, what is, I mean, not all the knowledge, but I mean, what they are about, all the 10 parts, because, yeah, I, I, I think it's so different, everyone is different, and I, I'm really curious how you feel, which part of the book 
had the deepest impact on you so far? Can you, what do you feel? Or are all of them, because it's so different. I speak to so many people and some say, okay, I prefer the first five. The others say, I prefer the, the, the last three or whatever. How do you feel about it? Moritz, are you still there? It's really difficult to say. I'm listening to the audio. Yes. Yeah, Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Please continue. It's really difficult to say because uh, when you listen to the audiobooks, like me, from book one to ten, um, it's much, much different than books from one to five, book one to five at the moment. And um, yes, so, so it's much more deeper when, when I'm reading it. Yes, exactly. That's what I, I have. I make the same experience because I, I listened to the to part 10 um, a few weeks ago and now when I read the books it's it's completely different different feeling and much more deeper and yeah, much deeper yes and and when I listen to the audiobooks I think uh, I didn't uh, yeah I didn't get it so much. But by reading it, I, I got so much more from the book, from the informations. So at the moment, at the most, I like a uh, book for mm -hmm. from one to five. I like book four the most. Mm -hmm. Can you say why? What's so special for you? What you resonate to or with? Oh, you are hard to hear. I don't know if it's your internet connection. We can't hear you very well. Really like is is uh, okay. Um, I try to to fix it. Maybe yeah. Now it's a little bit better, but still, um, the quality of your voice is not so good. <laughs> okay, then I make a break. <laughs> Okay, now I, 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 I'm curious, I want to hear more, but uh, maybe you just start again and when it breaks, then we will continue with, with someone else. But I, you started to say something, so I don't want to interrupt you. Start again. It's no problem. I, I make a little break, maybe it's okay. later better. Okay, okay, yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, how about you, Dennis? How was with you? I don't know. Yeah. I've been reading Anasta about a month ago, and that book really blew me away I, about her daughter and her, her son. And yeah, in the end, uh, where her son had to walk away, that just, oh, that was just so sad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he didn't want to be made a messiah or something, I guess. But yeah, I really liked that, the 10th book. Yeah, the, tent, the book tent is really great. And to me, it was also really, I have been contemplating it for a long time because this situation where where he just leaves and goes and he's still mm -hmm. a young boy and, and so mature on the other side. And, and, and then he says, okay, he doesn't want to be Messiah. He doesn't want to be star. He wants to, to yeah, to work without being famous and so on and it showed that those true masters those really true spiritual highly evolved beings they don't really look for followers yeah they don't look for people who worship them who pray to them they just work without showing them really yeah so this is what was to me what touched But my soul deeply yeah he wanted other people to find their own power within he didn't want to be their savior exactly yeah. and this is such a such an important powerful message to everyone yeah that those true masters they are all the same and the same with anastasia she does she doesn't appear on tv show she doesn't show herself you know it's just yeah that you have to be find your own way and you have to live your life and and 
yeah, this is how, how it works and not just to kiss feet of anybody where else, you know, all those gurus. <laughs> I am not that uh, yeah, fan of that, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, so this this um, situation had has really a deep meaning where where he where he just goes away. And even I watched the last interview with Vladimir Megre on for the German audience. This life, the, there were two parts of this interview. It was not that long ago, I think like two months ago or six weeks ago, something like that. Anyway, he, people, of course, everyone wants to know what the kids are doing, where are they, uh, and how do they look like, and can somebody say something more about them. And I also read about it in Facebook groups. Everyone is curious. And he doesn't say anything about it. And it's for the reason he doesn't say, well, they are here or they are there and you can meet them. Nobody knows where they are. There are such um, little informations maybe about them where uh, in the new um, of the book one, where there are some, some new information that he, the Claudia could be um, uh, involved. Uh, very little uh, um, for sure. No. Yes, I know that Xenia is there. Hi Xenia, would you like to say something? Uh, because it's quite interesting. Um, you haven't been here for a while. So would you like to say something? But feel free, of course. Xenia has been here um, several times on our call and she presented um, wonderful uh, presentations about King's domains in, in Belarus. I really like it uh, very much uh, what she prepared for us, but now I know Xenia is busy, so I don't know. Uh, Xenia, would you like to say something or would you like just to listen? Feel free. Okay, maybe she doesn't hear us. She's quiet, so yeah. Uh, is any anybody else would like to say something about your experience with the books? Which which part of the book is uh, the most powerful and beautiful for you, and why? I think it's so always inspiring to listen to other people how they make their experience because it's so unique for everyone. Everyone is different on a different journey. Okay, I see that <laughs> you are, uh, today we have a quiet group, nobody wants to say much today, so um, yeah, so I don't know, do you want me to t uh, tell you something or you just want to listen and yeah, normally we have more interaction in the group but i understand of course if uh, you prefer to be back and relax denise would you like to say something more uh, otherwise i would ask you to to mute yourself because there is a background voice which is uh, when you don't say anything then it's better when you mute yourself Aber, uh, i want to say something, hmm? um, I want to say something about a yes, please. Um, I feel like I've lived in lack my whole life, you know, um, maybe because of my fear of other people, but, um, but also, you know, people talk about manifesting abundance and abundance comes from living in, within the natural cycles of the earth to me. So it just um, never really made sense for me that we should expect abundance if we're not really caring for the earth. That's, that, that always never made sense to me, that we need, we need a relationship with the earth in order to, to experience abundance. Yes, this is so also a my deep thought. Yeah, thank you for sharing it because, you know, abundance, that means for everyone something else, probably. Most of the people, when they think about abundance, it's financial freedom, money, and all the stuff that you can feel free to live the life you want to. But uh, I met 
few or or yeah i met some people who are really abundant financially abundant and they have a lot of money but still they don't feel happy yeah so so as you say maybe abundance comes from our connection to nature and from our love for nature and that this is this powerful energy that gives us abundance in any other way and direction too yeah this is a good thought this is a good thought about how do we get abundant and there are so many seminars and books about getting rich and positive thinking and all this stuff but when we look around uh, not many people <laughs> who do practice or read those books get really abundant but what is abundance when we look at anastasia and her books that there is really very little um, about financial freedom and money but what does abundance mean to you this is really a good question maybe we talk a little bit about it so what does abundance mean to you dennis what do you think what does it mean to you yeah it's already a little bit be living, for me it would be living in paradise again like we you know were in the beginning that's what i wanted for a long time and be connected to the animals and the plants and everything and everybody you know yes i and i think we're going there now so let's hope that we're going this way and the more people wake up and and participate consciously in creation the faster we can go there and change the world but this is also a topic that about changing the world how i see it is that we cannot change the world really we can only change ourselves and if everyone changes then the world will change but when we just go out there and try to change other people and try to tell them what to do and how to live and to you know be fanatics and and this is not how we can change the world we can only change the world when we change something within ourselves so this is what how i see it I I, yeah. I think what I got from Anastasia's books was that um, the biggest thing we can do is touch the earth and start caring for the earth again yes. and creating our space of love that way. We can't change other people, but the earth wants to connect with us, and it always has. Yes, this is so deep and so true. And I mean, every day I, I see it in myself when i read these books and i read maybe two pages three pages it doesn't have too much per day and i get more and more conscious about connecting to nature, connecting to plants connecting to animals to everything around me of course it's not a new topic to me and i i have heard about it many times but these books somehow can change my consciousness and bring me every day closer and closer this is why i love them and of course when we read the books we learn that so many people from everywhere it doesn't matter from which culture you come which background religious background cultural social background that they impact our and change our consciousness so this is what um why they are so powerful yeah and and it doesn't have to be of course it's doesn't have to be that everyone who lives in the city now escapes the city and go somewhere in nature and and do something there because those people are not ready to do it from one day to another when they have never been in nature and lived have always lived somewhere in the city they they will probably have difficulties to do it but step by step this is what it's all about to change the consciousness hi xenia i can see you now you want to say something or not because i asked you i don't know if you have heard it or not uh, how you are doing uh, and so on because we haven't been you haven't been here for a while and once you have been there you prepared a wonderful presentation so maybe you want to give some update about you what's going on and so on Yes, yes. Uh, so, so I'm so, sorry because I kind of work today, so I'm all constantly on the phone. I might get disconnected anytime. But um, yeah, well, 
Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I um, I am at the border right now on the Polish side, uh, on the border with Ukraine, and um, kind of helping here with the refugees and uh, you know, like doing translation for journalists, so doing many different things. Mm -hmm. And I also keep in touch with some people from uh, Anastasia settlements in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so the situation is very sad, actually. So for, for example, I, I sent you the link to that um, one of the oldest uh, Ukrainian Anastasia settlements, which is uh, not far from Ukraine, kind of on the outskirts, or not far from uh, Kiev, from the capital, on the outskirts uh, of Kiev. Um, it's called uh, Dalina Jeral or Jeral Valley. So um, it looks like uh, there's no one left in, in that settlement. Everybody um, left the, um, the settlement, moved uh, to anywhere, like moved to Western Ukraine or left the country. Mm -hmm. So it's empty now and several houses were destroyed by missiles. And uh, yeah, that's, so that's, that's the situation. Mm -hmm. That's really sad. Do you know uh, how big the settlement is? Just uh, not... Uh, exactly yeah. how many families uh, live there but is it like 10 families or 20 or five or do you have an yeah. idea I, i'll google for that now because i don't i don't remember but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah this is really really sad and i uh, had a contact through you to one person because i wanted to make an interview with with her um, about the settlement in the ukraine and she sent me a really sad message that the house is destroyed, burned, and they, she had to left with her family, with her sons. Um, and yeah, they are still in, the, in Ukraine, but in the western part, as you said, Senya. And yeah, I told her, offered her that if she needs any help, should uh, contact us. But she has to decide if she wants to lift or not, left, leave or not, because of the situation. So it's really dramatic and, and really sad. So yeah, but you have better contact. You do you want to say something more? How is it with the refugees? How do the people feel and so? Uh, re refugees in general you mean yes yes in general and also uh, about them when you know more so maybe we begin with the settlement because this is of mm -hmm. course closer uh, yeah i see on the website anastasia.ru they have an article about the settlement um so they say it was founded in 2003 mm -hmm. and um well maybe maybe the this article is a little bit old uh, so here they say that uh, at that moment, when the article was put on the website, they had 15 families, mm -hmm. uh, 70 plus people, and uh, seven ch 17 children were born in the settlement. Wow. But maybe maybe the numbers were like I'm sure the numbers were bigger by uh, by 2022. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I'll find uh, a more uh, accurate information later. But you can imagine, I mean, 15 families is yeah. like 70 yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, living in the Anastasia settlement and um, yeah so one of the women who uh, was one of the founders of the settlement um, if you remember I think Gabrielle even advertised that she organized a festival of kind of documentary movies mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah so she runs a website and uh, she spread this information across all the different um, Anastasia settlements all over the world she wanted to uh, organize this um, movie festival basically mm -hmm. where people could send uh, little clips videos about their settlements or about well just from from people who are like like-minded people so and uh, and she was the organizer of this uh, cinema festival it was a year ago and uh, today I'm reading her on Vkontakte, which is like a Russian uh, social network. And she, ha she, she, uh, she has a very long post, post where she describes her experience of the last two weeks. So she was one of the few people who stayed in the settlement while almost everybody has left it. Oh. And she says the reason why she was kind of waiting for so long and stayed there is because it, it's very dangerous to, uh, to be on the road. So um, from their settlement to get to a kind of more or less safe point is two kilometers. But these kilometers are constantly uh, shooted by uh, the Russian soldiers. 
so it's it's very dangerous. She says it's 50-50. If you decide to kind of to move from your house to a safer place, it's just two kilometers, but you might not survive these two kilometers. Because uh, the, the Russian soldiers shoot even cars which are not military uh, vehicles, but just, uh, you know, just a regular peaceful population trying to leave uh, the dangerous area into safety, they are also shoot it. Mm. And so she decided not to do it. But then she describes um, how they constantly have to uh, run back and forth, hide in the basement each time they hear some noise, explosions sounds, uh, flight jets uh, flying above their house. So they constantly go to the sem- uh, to the basement and it's just, uh, it will add, it has been very stressful for her. And then she says uh, she has a little daughter who was, uh, she's been waiting for her birthday on the 10th of March. And so they decided to make a little kind of celebration for her, um, for her birthday. They even made a cake um, with the help of two other neighbors uh, who still stayed in the settlement. But even on her birthday, they heard some explosions very close to their house and they had to go into the basement. And then this woman decided she cannot stand it anymore. And they packed their things because they realized that it's even more dangerous now to stay in the house than to take this dangerous two kilometer trip to safety. And so they decided to go by car. It's just one car. And to go by one car is more dangerous than if you go in a caravan. Mm. Because if you see a caravan, well, maybe maybe some like they will shoot another car. Well, it's just but if there's just one (laughs) one target, basically one car, it was very dangerous. So she said they put white uh, white bed sheets all over to kind of as a white flag, you know, to symbolize that they are peaceful people. They are not going to like they are not dangerous. And so they safely managed to get out of there. And they reached some kind of block post with the Ukrainian soldiers. And the Ukrainian soldiers met them with words, don't worry, here you're safe. So now now they're somewhere in Western Ukraine. Mm. Wow, this is really, when you tell us about it, it feels like uh, (laughs) World War II or the situation. It's really a true war. And and she she says, well, they were were, um, driving they saw like these two kilometers or a piece of, of the road, they saw cars that were destroyed or shot it. They, they saw dead bodies. They, they, like, they saw burned uh, military vehicles. So uh, yes, and, um, and as for refugees in general, uh, there's a difference between those people who left, let's say two weeks ago and those refugees who come today mm-hmm. because the recent refugees have seen the horrors of war and the children have heard the flight jets and explosions and they saw the missiles and they saw flight jets and so they are more traumatized by war than those refugees who left the country let's say two or three weeks ago when when it just started Mm -hmm. yeah many people stay in ukraine and um, just arrive now after two three weeks of war because they say that they had hope that it would end very quickly, but it didn't. And now it's so, so dangerous, so, so dangerous to, uh, to take a trip, you know, to, to go somewhere, to travel. It's very dangerous. So it's now more dangerous than a few weeks ago, you know, that is mm-hmm. that's what you mean. Mm. Yes, yes. And, uh, and what I'm seeing at the border is r- like really women and children, women and children, women and children. And, uh, and really some, like yesterday we had, Oh, how is it possible to help? I I asked this woman who is already in Western Ukraine. I asked her, like, if she needs any help, then she can ask me. Because as we discussed with you, Agata, like you said, that some people from America can maybe help financially. And also there are a couple of uh, Anastasia settlements, let's say here in Poland. Maybe Maybe they can host a couple of families. Yeah, so I asked her if she needs any help, then she can she can turn to me. Because I don't know if there is, um, like, my impression is that there's close, connect, close connection between settlements within countries or between Belarus and Russia or Belarus and Ukraine be- before the war. At least we had lots of festivals that we celebrated together. We traveled to Russia and to Ukraine and to Belarus. It was just like one cultural um, uh, domain, so, so to say. But um, um, But I don't know. I think they don't really have much connection with European or American uh, readers, 
Yes, yes. So, and, and these are the people we can, I think they can rely on now. So I told them that there are people in, in America who can help financially and maybe someone can host them in Poland. So I don't, I don't, I just offered my help and no, not my, not only my help, but just I said that she can through me, she can maybe arrange something if she needs. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, yeah. Do you know, uh, is there, how many um, settlements are there in Ukraine? Do you know? Mm -hmm. No, let me check. I know, I know. More, more than one, several, yeah, All right. Oh, sure, yes, yes. Again, let me uh, just uh, check the website. Uh, uh, because those are in the eastern part of uh, Ukraine. I mean, the one is near uh, Kiev, so of course this is the eastern part, so it's the dangerous part. But I also wonder how is with the others if they. But, uh, not only eastern part that is dangerous, it's it's dangerous everywhere where the Ukraine is bombed now. So, for example, Kiev is one of the main targets. So everything around Kiev is not safe either. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what's in So, on Anastasia website, they have uh, web pages for uh, twelve settlements. Uh, but I'm sure there's more because um, yeah. the website is a little yeah. bit out there. And there are also many people for sure who don't live on settlements but just have their own uh, kin's domain you know that it doesn't always have to be a huge settlement because there are also people who live um, and created with uh, after reading the books their own space of love and they also mm -hmm. maybe now feel dangerous and have difficulties because of course we don't see much on tv uh, we don't really have reliable sources to get information what is really going on there all we see is of course uh, on all news channels they show us all the same but i'm really curious how it is with the normal people how how do manage this situation and yeah so this is of course is it really that can everyone escape or is it just possible for those who have more money and are able to finance the transport and so on do you have any information about that Senia? yes so uh, the trains in ukraine are for free mm -hmm. but it's almost impossible to get on a train somewhere let's say in the middle let's say the train goes from odessa to uh, to the to poland in Chamasil, this is a border mm -hmm. town. This is where the final stop of the train is. So let's say the trip from Odessa to Chamasil. Uh, but most people get on a train already in Odessa. Mm -hmm. So it goes, let's say, through Lviv. But in Lviv, you can't get on a train because it's packed. It's full. It's, there's just no way. Like everybody's just sitting in the in the in the corridor. Like everywhere, this um, it, it's packed. So, so trains are for free, but it's almost impossible to get on a train. So some people take buses and uh, one ticket for a bus costs about a hundred dollars, okay. uh, which is a lot of money if you have a big family, because for some people it's a monthly salary, a hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so I imagine. Yeah, yesterday, so. yesterday I talked with a family who um, um, ran from the city of Dnipro, mm -hmm. instead of central Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so she had like the mother of the family is with a four, four months old baby, seven year old child and two her parents, mom and dad. And so basically she she has to take care of both the children and her elderly grandparents or her elderly parents. And and they bought they had to buy four tickets for the bus, which is four hundred dollars. That's that's a lot of money for people. Mm -hmm. And then they arrive to Poland and they have no no one to support them you know like they have nowhere to live and they have to rent and find a find a job and she has a four months old baby who will work and who will support this family and her husband of course he couldn't leave ukraine so he had to stay in ukraine uh, that's the situation for for many people yeah so there's but i mean yeah, money wise there's a lot of support here in poland and uh, there's uh, at least uh, four websites that i know of where people offer their their own like their own flats their own houses they can share they they are willing to share accommodation with the polish families with the with the ukrainian families at least temporarily um yeah and i actually yesterday i visited uh, one uh, polish family here in chamasl it's a border town and mm -hmm. uh, this family has been accepting refugees from ukraine non-stop during the last two weeks so he said, the, the head of the family, the father said that they accepted uh, 46 people 
uh, already in the in the last two weeks. What yeah. is it? People stayed mm -hmm. at their place, ate in the ate with them, and amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I told you already that I have my um, relatives, my yeah. because I was born in Poland and grew up in Poland, so I have connection to. To Poland and part of my family comes from Przemyśl, so this exactly this city where yeah where all the refugees uh, enter and I talked to my uh, yeah somebody from my family and she told me that the support is really huge from the Polish side so I, I was uh, yeah surprised a little bit because the Polish Ukrainian history has not always been really positive yeah just the opposite so now it's even more beautiful that people connect to each other and help each other and support each other and they say that they do their best but of course poland is not that country that has so much experience with taking such huge amount of refugees here yeah, because this is this is also a difficult situation for them so now it's it's good to see that they are helping but i mean yeah the question is how long will it take and what how long this war will be we don't know anything and as you say the trains are packed and not everyone is able to leave and to escape and those people who are really in need i think those who don't have the money the finance to to just escape to flee they stay in the country and they are those who need help mostly that's how i see it yeah because they are really people who don't have anywhere to go yes and i, I can i can add a little bit uh well yes like poland accepted more than a million refugees already and uh, actually there's so many oh you cannot imagine how many volunteers are here and i was really surprised to see that there's like a lot of volunteers from other countries too i think this little town of Shamsl, with 60 000 population has never seen so many internationals. <laughs> yeah, that's what my... Yeah, my Everybody uh, speaks English here. Everybody speaks German here. Like, really, this is a really small town. But, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of volunteers from Germany, a lot of volunteers from Scandinavia, from France, from Italy, from Spain. And it's very mm -hmm. cold now here. So I wonder, like, why these people from Barcelona travel here? And Because I'm wearing a fur coat. It's, it's very cold here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And, and they sleep in tents. They, wow. They, yeah. So they, they really sacrifice in uh, their comfort to help people here. And of course, lots of volunteers from Poland and also Belarusians like me. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to say. Um, as for the resources, I mean, uh, like Polish people are really kind of, I think they're, they're generous. When, when it comes to this situation, emergency situation, they might like their neighbors, they might not like them, but in emergency situation, I see that they're, they're generous people. So there's a lot of food, there's a lot of help, support, but just um, some kind of um, things that don't depend on them, just housing. Like, where will this a million people live? There's, I think there's not enough um, free accommodation for them. So maybe they will, these people will move on somewhere to other countries. So that, that will become an issue soon. Not even jobs. I think, well, there's, there's, enough, there's enough work in Poland. Mm, yeah, well, I don't know. But I think they, many people will find something. But, um, but housing can be an issue. And also, uh, these are moms with children. So mm -hmm. they cannot take any job. And like in Poland, if this is a not, um, not a fancy office job, let's say, just a regular um, job for non-skilled workers, let's say, it normally implies working in shifts, let's say night shifts. So moms with children, just impossible. Just, so that that's also an issue. But yeah. I heard that the Polish state um, will offer some uh, one-time financial help for the families who had to relocate. Something like this is going to happen, and they also introduce some new um, laws that will help them legalize here the refugees. Yes, yes. And, and coming and coming back to that family uh, from the Anastasia settlement in the Gerald Valley. Uh, I remember some beautiful things that she wrote in her uh, uh, kind of memoir, let's say, on a, in a post. She said that, um, I mean, she wrote beautiful things. And what I remember was her saying that she was singing lullabies to her children when they were hiding in the basement to comfort them. And that they, together with, the, with her daughters, they tried to visualize the future and they 
they imagined all those Russian soldiers coming back to their families, coming back to their wives, joining, re like reuniting with their families and with their children, leaving the territory of Ukraine. So that, that's what they're visualizing. That's what, how they try to imagine this. Yes. How, how is the situation? Because you have more feeling uh, how it really is. Because what I heard that really the Ukrainian and the Russian, they are really actually close to each other. I mean, before the war, because many families are also part Ukrainian, part Russian, where father maybe comes from Russia, mother from the Ukraine or the opposite. And this must be really a difficult situation that these two countries who are actually really so close to each other that they now have a war and part of the family lives in Russia, part of family in, in Ukraine. Do you have any information? How, how does it look in the normal family? How do they deal with that? Well, uh, like I also have some friends from Ukraine uh, and I mean, and I have lived and worked in Russia for some time and I studied there. So my, my, my actually my family comes from Russia, although we mm -hmm. live in Belarus. But um, so I think the situation got worse already after the annexation of Crimea. So it's not, uh, it, it didn't start three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yes, so that was the probably the starting point. Uh, of the kind of um, drifting apart. Um, yeah. But I also heard that maybe you know more about it because this is really also such a important point that many people who lived in this Donbas uh, area mm -hmm. that they also had issues with the Ukrainian army and with those that it's not just that black and white that the one side is fault and the other side are only you know totally innocent of course war is always violence is always something awful but how how was it that how all this conflict started because it's so difficult to understand for someone from europe how why was this all issue about Krim and so so mm -hmm. well <laughs> well i i don't know why this conflict started uh, and I think many people don't understand it. When I talk with refugees now, many of them say, we're peaceful people. We mm. didn't even think that something like this would happen. Like, Because now the shelling and all these military actions, they are not only happening in eastern Ukraine. Uh, you, if you know Lviv... Uh, yes, sure. Is, it's um, not far away from what's Poland. A, what's the uh, German name for Lviv? Um, uh, Lemberg. Legino, Lem Lemberg. So it's in Western Ukraine. It's considered to be a safe place. And I think it was yesterday when uh, a bomb exploded 10, 20 kilometers from Lviv. So it's actually all, all over the place now. Getting, getting closer to the Western uh, yeah. border. Yeah. And, as for, in, and as for like just interpersonal relations between people, I mean, um, well, am I, from among my friends in Russia and in Ukraine and in Belarus and here in Poland, let's say four countries covered, uh, in in my circle we are more or less uh, having we have the same opinion, so that it just should stop and uh, and it shouldn't have even started. Yeah. But uh, I heard from some Ukrainians who have relatives in Russia that their Russian relatives tell them you don't have any war in Ukraine, you are lying, and this is all Photoshop. Mm. So, and they are telling it to those families who are taking this bus and leaving the country. So, I mean, if this is Photoshop, why would they leave the country then? Yeah, sure, sure. Of course, it's not the Photoshop. This is, that's for sure. But I, I was so interested in it and nobody can explain it to me. Why did it all start and how? And as you said, it didn't start two weeks ago or three weeks ago. There had been uh, fights in this Donbas region, it is, I think there live many Ukrainian and many Russian people and, and there was a conflict already, but nobody could tell me why is why there has been this contact. Some of them wanted to belong to Russia, some of them wanted to belong to Ukraine, but it's so unclear the situation. Yeah, for, for well, as, from what I know, like people who I talk to, I I wouldn't say that it was a conflict between people themselves on the kind of uh, in their everyday life on the everyday basis uh, i think the conflict was somewhere kind of a little bit higher <laughs> yeah so because again like i have um, 
some of the let's say I have I have friends in Russia who are I, 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 in my presentation I mentioned I mentioned those kind of traveling musicians bards right yes 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 like they have traveled all of these countries uh, singing songs and uh, uh, and uh, and yes yeah, so they even those people in Russia they they now I mean they they don't say anything about war. But I see what they're posting on their social networks, and it's just songs about peace. And also, they would accompany it with some kind of subtitle saying, "This song was composed in Mariupol, Ukraine." Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they don't have anything against Ukrainians or Belarusians because, of course, we all understand this. A kind of we call it a brother nations. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I mean. They are actually so close to each other that it's so sad to see what is going on there you know these are countries who people who have similar genetics similar bloodlines and now they fight each other and it's also difficult to understand for those soldiers young boys who maybe also didn't haven't uh, ever thought that they would have to go to war and, and fight yeah, they are neighbors, so this must be very difficult for both sides. I always try to understand both sides because it's not only always one side that it's fault. It's always the truth is always in the middle. That's how I see it. And you know what I see, for example, what is going on here in Germany with the Russian people who are really uh, normal people who have nothing to do with the war and they have never wanted a war and they didn't kill anybody and they are being bullied here so this is not good either so this is what i observe here in europe how that is really the situation that's all the news show on the one side but there are also other people who yeah so it's like always the wars is very very difficult yeah yes i agree with you but i think there's a little difference uh which is that all those military actions are happening on one territory. So the country is kind of destroyed and some yeah. cities have been destroyed completely. Yeah. Um, so This is very, very sad. And that's what I, uh, the message I got from Svetlana, from the settlement that brought really tears in my eyes because she thought, she wrote me that the settlements, it was their home, their space of love, their place where they feel safe and what they created and we all know how much love we put in the place which we love and and which how much energy and it's everything we live for you can say and then from one day to another some people come and destroy everything you have created so this is this is really very very hard and i try to understand or or just to 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 feel but of course she is not now in the in the situation that she wants to talk about much about it but still i offered her that anytime she can contact me and so but she is not sure if she can leave because her older son is 18 and if he is 18 he's not allowed to leave the country so this is really difficult situation probably in every family there are such traumatic yeah, decisions and, and experiences so this is especially for those people who believed in the in in their vision and everything they have created it must be even much more yeah painful yeah. yeah does anybody else would like to say something how you feel about this conflict how is your um how are your feelings and it is very difficult for those of you who came a little bit later. We have been speaking about the situation in in the Ukraine because uh, Xenia, who is so loving that she is on the border and told us really the truth how the situation there is a Polish-Ukrainian border where all the refugees come and she has contact with them, of course. So, um, yeah, and that there are settlements in, in Ukraine that are destroyed and houses burned so this is really really sad and difficult so anybody would like to express your thoughts how you feel about it 
or do you maybe have you met any refugees or somebody already because they come to our countries too of course and i know that in germany for example there are uh, so far have been 200,000 registered but of course every day new are coming and um yeah there there are some challenges of course how uh, where to put all those people in this in this speed yes hello unmute yourself and uh and just say something i cannot see you very well <laughs> but i see just we can't hear you you are muted uh, and the left down corner you can unmute yourself now now it's better yes how nico is that you yes it's nikos from crete hi nikos. i'm nikos hi, hi, hi Agata. Uh, I, I would like to ask Senya or also you, everybody, I will always focus now since the war, start the war, in the peaceful solution. Can we visualize or to do uh, together, all together something for peace? I mean, what's the proper, how say, action for Anastasia or for everyone to, you know, to bring peace? Just to visualize or uh, on this and to focus on these peaceful solutions? I like to ask the company, the friends here. Well, of course. Do you understand? Yes, of course, of course. I understand you very well, and uh, that's what I wanted to do. Our next meditation will be uh, about creating peace and to, um, the vibration of the earth to really rise the vibration and to, yeah, positive energy to bring into the world. But I think every one of us can do it in in his own way on this level i don't know if many of you meditate i meditate and i um i put my energy there and my vision just to try to yeah or put my energy to to create peace but of course there are many people around the world who do it now so it's the more energy we have the better so, of course, when um, I think everyone can do something for that and there are groups that do it and we know the more energy comes together, the better. Yes, okay. I mean, you know, every, everyone from his place, from his village, try his best for that. Yes. How is the situation in, in Greece? Do you get refugees too from Ukraine or not? Yes, we have, we have refugees from Ukraine because in Mariupol they live about 30,000 Greeks. Uh, so all of them, they are welcome here and they come all, all the time, don't stop. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the situation here is that, you know, uh, we are in between because we, here both counties are orthodox, you know, and we are also orthodox. Yes. And uh, we have very good relation with Russians and also with Ukraine. Many Greeks, they live there. Yeah. So it's very hard for every, everyone, you know, to... Uh, brother nations they fight each other nobody was expecting things like that yes this is really hard and that's how i feel as well and as you said they are both so neighbors and yeah it's really really sad what is going on there we have johanna hi johanna how are you hi i'm fine thanks i just came home from work from work um so sorry for being late um, I wanted to say um, some of my thoughts um, to this situation in Ukraine. Um, I've heard um, that they had a war since the, uh, the, um, the last eight years within Ukraine. And um, I'm not sure, but I've, a version I heard um, myself um, is that um, I don't know where the, the Russian people are attacking. I, I've heard they are not really so much attacking the people of Ukraine, but more the large um, where the power is. And so I've, I've also seen someone in Ukraine um, making a report video and she told um, us that some of the Ukrainians are seeing it as the Russian trying to free Ukraine from the fights um, in in this uh, country because um, 
the government has said um, Russian is no longer a, um, a language allowed to be official. Um, and there are a lot of Ukrainians in Russia, uh, Russian speaking Ukrainians there. And so they had this war and um, they see it as um, the Russians trying to free Ukraine. And um, I don't think that war is a good situation um, and not the, for the people to be in, um, involved in it, but for, for no one. But I think it might, um, as, as difficult as, as it is right now, and as bad as it is right now, it might lead to something we cannot imagine yet, and that will be far better than we can imagine. That's what my thoughts are, and that's where I see the positive positivity in it, because I think the in my in my feelings, uh, how I feel um, about the situation is that the, let's say, negative energies are destroying themselves. And um, if they are fight, uh, destroy, it's not um, about um, the countries, but the energies of, of this uh, that are here. And they are destroying themselves. And um, so there can only be, um, light full energy left and if we focus on um, building up something new something full of light we can help that to be a smoother change into a beautiful world i hope it's understandable how how i think because um i, I have a clear vision of it but i can't find the right words um every time um but that's how i feel about it and i think yes it will lead to something very very beautiful in the end even if it's difficult to go through and i don't like wars and i i do like both i do like ukraine people i do like russian people I really am with the people and with um, everyone being in their own power and being able to live as freely as possible. Yes, this is, thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. And there are, of course, different opinions uh, about that, what is going on. And, you know, I, I've been thinking about it a lot too, but then I decided, well, I will, I will never be able to, know probably the true reason why it started and who started it who is really behind it who ordered it and this is so difficult and when we try to blame some people and, and to divide the society it will not be better so yeah there are how there are those people really are suffering we we it's our duty to help them. It is really our duty to support people who who make this very, very painful experience. But we are not to blame Russians, people, normal people who have nothing to do with it yes. because this is not the solution. And it will not bring peace to the world. It will make it even worse. Because when I what I observe here and in Poland as well, how even the Polish, um, many Polish people and also the government, how they are speaking about Russians and this is not healthy, this is not good and it can even spread the war to other countries. So it's not the solution. We, we don't really have the possibility to judge who started because we tried to, to explain who be, how did it all start who really how did conflict started and no one knows it lavinia you want to say something sorry uh, because you i saw you please express hi. yourself hi lavinia nice to have you here yeah nice to meet you and hi to everyone 
I'm so happy to be here. I uh, I was um, in in the car and I couldn't say anything because my signal was bad. But now I'm home, so <laughs> yes, it's okay. I just wanted to to um, say that my thoughts are um, they are. Um, I thought what's worse, two years um, um, with this corona situation, two years um, with this, or now with the with the war. Because I think that when we go inside ourselves, the corp the 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 body uh, react um, um, reacts react uh, uh, the same with this, uh, with this uh, uh, stress hormone on Neg negativity um, yes and that yeah I think that both are not not good and the the solution is to go inside and to find inside ourselves a balance. You mean we as normal people or everyone or I think so. everyone for uh, for themselves so I think so too and I think so it's uh, with both situation it's it's not important whether not as important whether uh, background is um, but what we do out of the situation how will we we what we um, do with it and how we choose to to further live and where we want to put our energy so I decided to put as less energy as possible to the situations I don't want and to focus on what I do want and that's creating a new world and for me right now it's art and being in my grandmother's garden outside yes and I think that's the most important thing we can do because we create an energy an energy field with whatever we do yes true on the other hand it's of course uh, not so easy to to be that neutral when you are like Senya on the border and you see daily those people who are really traumatic and, and in fear and in pain and all what they but have then experienced. you can do whatever is possible to help the people and um and focus on how you can help them be being able to help themselves not to Help them to um, to um, was heißt abhängig? Um, dependent, depend. Yeah, yes, to depend on help, but to be able to help themselves. Yeah, but um, how can I help? How are they to help themselves when they have war and they have to flee? <laughs> That's not so yes, easy. <laughs> yes, no, but um, you. Uh, what I want to say is. Um, every situation is different so um maybe sometimes it's it's really helpful to give them shelter but sometimes it's helpful to find other solutions and it's um everyone must see at the um what the what the um at the different cases and different people and situations where they are in. I think this is so complex that it's really difficult to say this is the way and this is not the way, but what all of us can do and everyone for himself is try to keep our frequency and our energy yes. on, a, on a high level and not allow all this negativity, all those pictures we see and to to yeah drop us down and to bring us into this lower frequency with fear with uh, aggression with anger jealousy and all the stuff that is going on now this is what all of us can do and i think it's a trap also that we get so involved emotionally in situation which we really cannot judge obviously uh, really 
on the normal level because we don't have the information. We don't, we can, we are not able to do it. What we are able to do it and what we should do it is to help people who are in need, definitely. But just to get political and try to and do all those fights on Facebook, you know, I am pro-Russia, I am against Russia, I am pro-Ukraine. This is so, um, it is a trap, I think, and it is created to create fear in the marketplace, to create also hatred and all those negative emotions, which which are everything else as what we need. We need, to, we need to positive thoughts and we have to see that we don't get in, um fear and all those aggressions and all those negative thoughts okay. yes Daniel, please uh, i think well i agree with you that we need to help people in need but uh, it means that we kind of react to the situation so someone does something and we react to what they do and now we're thinking how can we what can we do to prevent the situations in the future or to stop what's happening now so that we become kind of the leaders and we set the agenda and we initiate something so that other sides react because otherwise we uh, we i think uh, uh, we might kind of end up being victims just reacting to the situation people flee we help them find accommodation but what is the at core kind of and how can we heal the core of this conflict Exactly. Beautiful, beautiful statement. And it's not the solution that everyone uh, flees from his country, because how? what about the, all those men who stayed in Ukraine? What about, you know, children and mothers are here and the fathers are over there? What is the solution? It's not a solution either. And this is, uh, as you said, it's better to create another future and prevent all those situations, those other situations. Yeah. Beautiful. Lavinia, did you want to say anything or just moving? No, it, it, the idea was that is, I think we don't have to look for who is killed on, and uh, who has right or who is wrong. But to help these people, and I agree with what you, Sonia, uh, uh, say, that we have to, to, to look for this uh, um, who, uh, uh, what to, you said that we have von, von a point uh, yes and von, um, von, von this sammeln uh, to to heil to heal my 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 thoughts are that we we have to do this and we have to be a community each one for them for themselves to do it but we have to to be a, a force because there is a system behind all this whether we talk about war or the or, or corona egal that we we have to to i think that we have to be many to have this energy you mean to uplift the world to change the world yes yeah, yes richtig yes, yes of course <laughs> And we are a few, I think, in the world. We are many, and we don't know each other, but I know there are many people who try to keep the energy high and, and to heal um, Mother Earth and support people also, yeah, through your meditation, through your positive energy. And this, this what is going on now, will bring huge changes to the whole Europe, if maybe even the whole world. And when we look at it from a different perspective, from a higher perspective, without being emotional, just really to see it without emotions, rationally, then we will see that after every war, changes come and something new is being born. And then we have 
first chaos and then something new is, is yeah, growing out of that. So these are difficult times, but as we know, uh, we are, even without this war, the situation with the corona before was already something that was not normal, that, that something that brought yeah, great difficulties in, in, in our planet and chaos and people, so many people have lived in fear, in, in um, loneliness, and that created already very negative uh, vibrations on our planet. And now what is going on is maybe the next level, maybe after that something new will will happen, will be born, and then maybe it's over. We don't know, but we have to see that how we manage the situation, every one of us, that we don't allow this energy to drop us down and to make us sad and fearful and just to try to live our lives really as good as we can. This is how I do it. And I don't try, don't, I don't want to get involved in all the news. Also, I don't watch news very little just to know what's going on, but then I don't want anybody else to, you know, program me. <laughs> I think what's also um, helpful, at least it helped me to see it from that point of view, is uh, I see lot now a lot of people not going against Russia, but against Putin. And um, he... He did start a war, but he also did um, um, allow people from Russia to have their own land for free. And so I, I, I don't, uh, I, in, I see that that um, situation helped me to understand um, those people from the government and those um, people of power. Um, they are just humans they do good things they do bad things and if you see it on that level um it helps to be uh, to have some kind of compassion for them even if they do bad things yes yeah, starting a war is 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 not good and um uh but that doesn't mean he's all bad within himself he it, maybe he didn't see any other way out of that situation and because he is in that um in that um place um of ruling a country um it's such a huge impact um but it it doesn't make him all evil or all whatever it's just a part of him him and um, so that helps me to feel compassion for, not for only for him, but for the other people of government too. And that uh, in, in order helps me to be more in peace within myself, if you understand what I mean. Sure. And from that place, I can, I can spread more, more loving energy and I can create more um, more loving things and more more life and that helps to um, to make the world an, a, a better place so at least that really helped me maybe it helps some of you too I don't know no. but now when I uh, yeah this is all true what you say but I have to say that I was really not that involved in this situation. I try not to judge anyone because I don't have the information to judge to judge them who is wrong, who is right. I don't have it. So everything I say is just, uh, you know, guided by my emotions uh, and I try to stay neutral. But when I got this message from Svetlana from, from Ukraine and she wrote that their house is burned, destroyed and that she has no more place to come back and she has four children and her husband had to stay in the war, then I was not able not to get emotional, you know, because this is really, uh, that touched my soul very deeply. And I was really crying, for, even if I have never met this woman, but it brought tears into my eyes because it was so sad 
to read something, to read this message and the energy that came through this, through her words, with her words, that was so authentic and so sad, but still she, she just, the way how she wrote these words to me, they just showed how much evolved and spiritual this woman is. So it was really touched me deeply. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say, because it was the first time that I really got in direct contact with someone who who are who is in this situation. So I think when we what we all can do is really put positive energy and, and try to with our thoughts create peace and create um yeah that the people can come back to their homes and as long as they they can't that we can help them as much as we can and especially maybe that touched me so deep also because it was on the king's domain settlement and everything i read in anastasia books and about this space of love and how safe people feel there and that you put all your love all your energy everything you have your heart in this project that this you built your future on that and you put all your hope and yeah your vision your joy and then within a couple of hours somebody comes and destroys everything what you have been working on for 20 years and we all know uh, how we feel when we see our first uh, first plant growing tomato or our mm, trees or everything that we love and somebody comes and destroys what you love mostly this is really hard to me it's hard and i still have to contemplate on it and in this situation i cannot stay neutral and say okay that's how life is yes of course that's how life is but um it's still um, difficult for me to swallow yeah i think just because it came to my mind right when you when you were talking um that she the energy never disappears so what she built up um it 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 has built up in a in, in an energetic level too and um that because of that maybe if she starts over again it will what she already did will help and make it even more beautiful even more more filled and 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 i, I don't know how how to describe it but i i've experienced in life when you um have something that really knocks you off of your feet even if it's something that seems to be from completely outside and you have nothing to do with it um there's a reason why it happens to it's a it's a deeper reason why it happens to you and not your neighbor and i i don't think that um that it's a nice a, a nice place to be and it's it's definitely definitely horrible but i think um the worst thing you can do in this situation is to give up and be a, a decide to be a victim the the best thing you can do is to stand up and start even if it's difficult but start um start building up start um dreaming your dream and and um building building your dream and um i know it's a difficult situation to be in but i i really do think um in 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 some way this experience will help those who experience it grow i i don't know I, I, I can't say how or, or why, but that was what that's what I what I I feel that's Yeah, sure. I, I mean I know what you mean and of course when you look at it from a higher spiritual level then you can say, well, 
they created it, they yourself wanted to come and experience it. We all can see it from this uh, perspective and it's a karmic situation. We can see it from this level as well. And it's so true what you say, but when you are really so touched and I mean, when it's so directly your situation that your home is destroyed, everything you have created, of course, this experience will change her and she will grow and she will get stronger. And all those people, not only her, I just take her as an example. Mm -hmm. And they are spiritual people already. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done what they have done. Yeah. So the, they will grow with this experience. But just to go through it, it's, it is really hard. Yeah. So it depends on which yeah. level we look at the situation. Yeah. So. Uh, yes, I, I just try to look at it. I, I come to it every time in my life myself. But <laughs> when I catch myself and I'm in a situation I don't want to be in, uh, I, I and I catch myself. I try to look at it from above and from from the outside and from. I don't know what it will bring to me, but if I go through this, I know it will be much better than than what what I have created. Uh, what what has has me, has brought me there, and that helps me to go through it yeah yeah sure we all need hope it's not easy to always see it that way <laughs> i know <laughs> but if you catch yourself and if you can just for a moment do that it will help you sure sure and i am sure that those people especially those from the settlements they they are more mature and they are more spiritual they have a different consciousness and they will see this situation from a different level but still uh, you know it is hard it is hard and we cannot speak it now uh, you know that it's a small thing it is not but on the other hand yeah what we can do with small people <laughs> gathering here together yes we can only try to keep our frequency high and support them as, as much as we can. And, and as Xenia said, especially try to prevent such situations in the future because it's not a solution to take all the refugees and see. And now life goes on and it's wonderful. They all have their homes, their families, their tradition, their culture, and they want to live in their homes. So, yeah. But it's really amazing which times we live. I would... I would never expect it that I will live in a time where there will be war in Europe so close to, to where I am. Of course, we had already war in, in, Yugoslavia, in Yugoslavia when I was a child, but I was little and I didn't really uh, yeah, know much about it as a child. But now it's, it's, well, it's huge. Okay. We are, I see that we are now a little bit over time. I don't want you to, to yeah. Maybe you have appointments. Senya wants to say something, please. Well, I want to ask if, if there's going to be a, an American call tonight? Because I'm- No, I think next week. Uh -huh. okay. Next week it will be, yeah. So maybe you could, uh, um, I can tell Gabriel about it or you can contact him if you want to. About, uh, if you want to say about the situation, I'm sure that they are very interested about what is going on in, in Ukraine, especially people in, in America. They uh, they are not as close to the situation as we are here in Europe, of course. So, yeah. Okay. It's really wonderful to talk to you and to share and to see how other people think and we are also individuals so yeah i really like this cause they are so uplifting and every call is different and every time we get different people and different not always uh, different people but different thoughts different topics it's it's really wonderful so um anyone of you would like to say something at the end because i think if there is nothing special you would like to share if so please feel free we can um stay on the call if there is something it's important to you to express, then please feel free. Anybody want to say then just, just start if you want to say something, just start. 
Okay, nobody wants to say anything else. <laughs> so maybe now it's for the moment everything is said and expressed and we feel nourished. And for me, it was again a beautiful conversation, beautiful call. I really like this course and I am grateful and honored that you all came and spent this time with us in this round was wonderful thank you for your heart <laughs> this is really awesome yeah so um yes i i now say thank you very much hope to have you on our next call everything is of course on our web page maybe for those of you who don't know but i think all of you here know the web page of anastasia foundation and facebook group otherwise i can share it in the chat if anyone doesn't know it please let me know then i share it um, and then we can, you can find us on Facebook on, um, and we have even our own community platform at Anastasia Foundation Telegram. It's really, really beautiful and many people come and share. So feel free if you resonate, if you feel inspired, join us. So for today, I say thank you very much. Stay in a good positive energy. Stay healthy stay really in don't let anybody and anything um, bring you down we we are needed now more maybe than ever to send out positive energy and positive thoughts and help our way that's what we all can do so thank you very much stay inspired and see you soon bye bye i close the call now